where should we start? I just wonder how much the game has changed since we had Richie and Gary and those things up here to start with. What's your assessment, Andrew? You've been a brilliant, successful captain. You've now promoted yourself by getting into the commentary box, obviously, and joining our ranks. <coughs> is, it, is it an easier game for me? I can't believe that. <laughs> <laughs> your chance will come in a minute, Andrew. Easier game in there? Well, in the commentary box? Yeah. It is the easiest game of all the easy games. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we work bloody hard in there, don't you know? Um, but you're very good at it. Did you enjoy it? Thank you. Uh, it was great fun. Uh, actually, just, just on as an aside, it, I mean, it's, it's great to be here tonight in such a luscious company, and we were very fortunate to be hosted by Sir John Major at Downing Street last night, which for most of the guys, I think it was a great honour and privilege. For me, it brought me out in cold sweat because the last time I was there was in 2005, after the Ashes in 2005. Yes. Um, and the garden there was some talk about some exploits that were happening in the garden, but one of the things I remember most of that 2005 Ashes going to Downing Street, being met by Tony Blair out the front, we were all getting lined up to do the photo in front of the, num the famous number 10 sign and, and Tony Blair was trying to be, you know, quite welcoming, he doesn't know a lot about cricket, he was like trying to make polite conversation here. All these photographers out in front, he, he turns to the players and said, oh, it's amazing how many people are here, it's incredible, I wonder what they're all doing here. And Matthew Hoggard, who is standing right next to him, said, they're all here to take photos of you, you not know, men. <laughs> well, that's Matthew, isn't it? I was going to say up to that point that you were introducing a new theme to the whole captain thing. You're being a sort of statesman figure, Andrew, but you kind of let it down there quite a bit. Big job being captain leader, then. Yeah, it always has been. I, I, I mean, there's so much interest and attention that's placed on the shoulders of a captain, and I think that's increased even more these days with the media. Um, so much more demand for the captain's time. But at the same time, the captain these days gets a lot more help as well. And, and coaches, backroom staff probably play a bigger role now than they did in the past. And obviously, in my tenure, it was great to have someone in the calendar of Andrew alongside me to, to sort of shield me from some of the sort of more lusty blows that you guys deliver in our direction. <laughs> How do you work out that relationship? Does it change Andy from captain to captain? Do you have the same relationship? With Alistair that you did with Andrew Prince, it's always the same. Uh, if I might say so, I'd be really lucky to have two uh, good men uh, to work with and uh, two good men that are, are lead, have been leaders of uh, the England cricket side, uh, certainly the test side. Um, but yes, I think those relationships do alter uh, slightly dependent on the character, I think, of the captain. Um, and it's experience? I mean, do, are you likely to be more in charge for when a new captain comes along? Um, or has it been more? Yes, so, so for instance, in, in, in the Strauss uh, uh, cook change, um, you know, Strauss was a more experienced cricketer when he took on the captaincy than uh, Alistair was. And, uh, and, and certainly, probably, I think it's fair to say, a more dominant captain in the dressing room. And I think the part of the coach's job is to uh, adapt to that, that type of situation. Perhaps play a, a quieter role uh, when there is a, a stronger captain in charge. And maybe stronger is not the right word, but a more dominant captain. And, uh, and as Alice is growing in confidence, uh, hope, hopefully he can, uh, he can take on that slightly um, more proactive role, both in the dressing room and, of course, how to do it. Uh, you, Kumar, uh, I think I'm right, but it might get wrong, Kumar, but I mean, you, you opened the bat and you kept wicket and you capped at the same time. Certainly Andy did. Were you doing that as well, Kumar? I mean, the whole lot, keeping wicket, captain, and opening the bat at the same time. Did you sit down with the when you were captain? I can't remember. I batted number three, um, and, I, and I kept uh, wickets uh, only one day as I gave up wicket keeping and tested it quite a while ago. Yes. Um, but uh, it, it was an it was an interesting job, uh, doing all three at once. Uh, not easy at times, and that would probably show in my captain's direction. Um, but to stay involved in the game is, I think, the, the, the best thing. You know, I'm a terrible fielder. I feel that in my early one days, 
I need to test matches nowadays. I get stuck at either you know fine leg or middle or middle. I feel about two balls a day. Uh, and yeah, that, 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 that's wonderful. But when you're keeping, you're right there. You're right involved, um, and it, it, it keeps you motivated. It keeps you it keeps you alive. So um, I'm pretty happy and pretty privileged to yeah. be in that position. Talk a bit of politics with, with Ali when he was up. But I mean, you were playing with your country at all strife as well at times. And cricket follows keenly as it is. Were you aware of that as players and as captain? That actually is a bit more than this cricket game. Yeah, I think in, in, in Sri Lanka, uh, cricket's a lot more than a sport. It, it's, it's bound us all together. We've had a common cause to fight for uh, as a society. Uh, we've had uh, true representation of Sri Lanka in the cricket side, uh, with players from all ethnicities, religions and backgrounds playing together. Um, and they say that even during the height of the war, there were ceasefires when you played a World Cup final or a World Cup semi-final. And that is how motivated Sri Lankans were to watch this great sport. And I think, I think when we did play, uh, we, we carried the responsibility with us. Sri Lanka's changed now, after 2009, we've changed a lot for the better. Uh, but I, I hope that we don't lose sight of that responsibility that we still carry to try and inspire and empower the next generation of cricketers to take up this wonderful sport, especially chess cricket and keep playing and enjoying themselves. Yeah. Sean, sure, you've got an important job here, because you are, well, if there's most commentary boxes, which you do now, who are the best, most incisive, thoughtful, summarizers, experts in those boxes? <laughs> They're bowlers, aren't they, Sean? Sure? They are the bowlers. It's not that simple. And do you, I think, are the only Bowling captain that we have here. I was not bowling captain, I was not around the captain. Don't put me away like that. <laughs> no, I think it's been great to work with the different uh, people in different commentary boxes, uh, get to know them behind the scenes, get to know the true nest of the same, which will be revealed to you at some stage. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think we've heard actually, yeah. honestly. Yeah, get to I mean, there's a thousand of because the pressure's all us. Myself and Strassi, we can say what we want to this interview with the three of them are still playing and um, yeah they're connected to, to the RCC and have to watch what they go about so it's nice to release in the, in the commentary box and it's nice to work with the English guys at Sky because obviously they're very knowledgeable and um, you've got Lord Gar, um, the biggest jazzer in the, in the centre and, um, and he leads from the front and then Beefy has got some wonderful uh, habits that uh, are probably best left behind those <laughs> But they're a good bunch of guys, and it's nice to go on the other end and just to pass on some information. Just on Kumar's answer that he also gave there, um, there's some homework for you guys to do tomorrow morning when you get to the office. The first thing you've got to do is to go onto YouTube and just type in Sangakara Sledges Hollow. <laughs> it was the World Cup in 2003, and you heard about Chapelli and all his sledges that he used to do, but not a lot of that was recorded. Well, uh, with the sum mark in place, we've got the whole two-minute episode. <laughs> He's such a polite young man, I don't believe it. Yeah, exactly. I've got this wonderful welcome, and he basically explained the scenario and the situation, how there was all the pressure I was facing, and how many millions of South Africans were counting on me. And it's, um, you know, I really needed to perform. So he understands his cricket, that's what for sure. <laughs> But do yourself a favour, he's, he's dialed out to the story many times and uh, go and look at it in the morning and have yourself a little giggle. I think we're going to have to look at it now. Yeah, yeah. Mahela, where's, where's the game for you at the moment? I often I'm put on my telly late at night and I see one day internationals being played here and there. You're often batting and playing beautifully. And I look around and there's nobody there. Empty grounds. But a lot of these one day games and so on. Is that a challenge for? For someone like you now, there's so much one-day cricket being played. Yeah, it's, it's difficult for even for us to keep a track of where our next flight is going to be and you know, where our next game is. But I think the game has evolved. It, it has evolved a lot and uh, I think we need to go with the trend. Uh, but I think we've spoken about test cricket and I think that's where we need to probably pull back a little bit and, and keep to the traditions and you know, try and stick with it. Pull back a button what? What do you mean? Uh... 
Well, I hope I don't get in trouble with the oh, ideas. No, 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 no. <laughs> Well, I don't know, I'm a bit old fashioned, I think, you know, I know the last cricket committee they've spoken about pink ball introducing in test cricket. I think the last time we saw anything in pink ball was when, when the West Indies dressed up during the Packers series. <laughs> yeah? uh, just imagine like those two fast balls running in and dodge and holding with the pink ball, I don't think it would have been great. So <laughs> I, I think we need to stick to the traditions a bit more yeah. and there's there's a lot of room for us to maneuver with, with the one day version and, and in, in T20s where you bring in the spectators, getting in the younger people but I think game of cricket has come along where I think you know, we, it's our responsibility to try and keep it going. Preserve the traditions. Okay, very good. <laughs> I'm going to give my more time for the go in a minute. I've actually got to go let the dog out. So I'm going to be in trouble. I've got one more question for Andrew and for Andrew. Andrew Major, first of all. Which one is Major? God, who is? Andrew Flower, first of all. You are, of course you are. Congratulations to Summer. Brilliant to win the Ashes. It's going to happen again, isn't it? This winter. Yeah, and it's interesting that it's happening so quickly after this last Ashes. I don't think that's ever happened before. It's to do with scheduling, and there are good reasons for it. And I, I think some people have been a little worried about overkill, uh, that, you know, the opposition playing so many games against each other in a short space of time. And, uh, but I think there is uh, heightened interest, if anything, uh, for this uh, away, away Ashes series. Uh, you know, the, some of the tension between the two sides, um, the uh, historical and traditional rivalry of the two nations and the, and the amazing interest that it generates in both countries is going to make it a, another amazing uh, experience for our players and, uh, and our coaches to be out there. So I'm very thankful that I'm part of it, very lucky to be part of it, and I'm, I'm very thankful that we've got a, a really good group of young men um, that fights so hard for their country. Yeah. And Andrew, you're going to be there. Do you think you see a repeat of four years ago? Uh, yes, because Australia aren't very good. So yes. Hi, <laughs> Andrew. Well, Thanks very much. Well, is Ian Chappell still here? I hope he is. Thanks, Ian. We'll see you in Brisbane as well. Andrew Stratus, Andy Flower, Peter Sangakara, Sean Parker, Mahendra Jai, all of them, ladies and gentlemen.